Hey guys, for this video I'll be designing and analyzing this hip beam. Uh, the deadlord for this roof system is 12 pounds square feet. The snow load that this roof system is going to experience is 38 pounds square feet. The moisture content is less than 19% and normal temperature conditions apply. Reference design values and section properties are taken from the NDS supplement. So again, we'll be using the NDS National Design Specification for Wood Construction, the 2015. Addition, not only that, but the jack raptors here are providing some stability to the hip beam. So we could say that the beam stability factor, the adjustment factor for the beam stability will equal to 1. So there will be no reduction due to that. On the left side over here, we have a roof plan for the hip roof, and on the right side, we have the blow version of this plan view. Um, for the hip roof, if you see this portion of the hip roof, it's very, sim very similar to a gable roof. If anything, it is a gable roof, which we have our rafters, we have a ridge board, and we have our ceiling joists. The ridge board is not really doing anything structural. Um, it's just providing stability. Uh, to the raptor itself. You don't want the raptors to be moving up or down. Um, the roof itself wants to become, if there's loading on the roof, it wants to become as flat as a paper, a piece of paper. All right. So in this section, what's preventing from that happening is the ceiling joist. The ceiling joist preventing the raptors move or displaced from, from left to right on this side or from right to left on this side. So ceiling joist is doing a lot of work, is intention. Now, if you go over here, there is also thrust here, and there's also a thrust. But what's taking care of that is that we're making this hip beam a structural beam itself. So it's seeing loading, uh, and then it's gonna be there's going to be an end reaction over here and an end reaction over here. So um, again, uh, a hip is the outside corner where the two planes here meet on the on the roof, and here we have our jack rafters and the jack rafters is just being it's being supported by the hip beam and it's being supported by the uh, wall itself um, and again there there is will be no thrust over here because we're assuming that the hip beam is a structural beam is it's, it's picking up the slack it's picking up everything here uh, if you don't want to consider the hip beam as a structural member then you will have to re uh, you will have to change the orientation of the joist here to take that thrust. And I've seen that happen. I've seen it happen before, and it's actually pretty cool. What an engineer will do is that they'll beef up this ceiling joist. So it will become a beam. They'll beef it up. It will probably be maybe a couple of LVLs. And then they'll change the orientation of the ceiling joist to something like this. Um, and then they'll keep they'll have the joists go on this they'll have on this side they'll have the joists going that way they'll have the joists go and have this kind of orientation so what's going on it, it wants to become flat as a paper the roof so there's thrust going down this way and what's pre preventing it from moving or displacing is uh, this uh, beam over here. There's tension within the ceiling joist and the beam here is picking up that load uh, There might be some hangers over here. So you will have to design for the hangers to take that withdrawal Over here. We also have the ceiling joist and there they want to displace to the right and to the left and Their intention and what's preventing that is this joist over here. So this might have to be a double joist uh, double joints and then I will provide some blocking just to help it out so that's that's two ways that I know that uh, um, you could design a hip roof system is you either you, you could either have this hip beam become a structural beam and it's picking up the load or you could just change the orientation of the ceiling joints and then the hip beam itself will, will be more of, of a ridge board and will be doing much structurally uh, the ceiling joints will be doing all the work Alrighty, so now I'm I'll be I'm gonna write some steps on how to design for a hip beam if it's a structural beam. So the first thing you want to know is you want to know the pitch of the roof. Second thing you want to know, and I'll provide that right now. The pitch of this roof is a four to twelve pitch. 
uh, with that being said, if you have the pitch of the roof, then you could change the dead load from a diagonal projection into a horizontal projection. And I talked about that in the designing a gable roof uh, video. So if you want to know more about that, then you should check that out. So yeah, so yeah, uh, with the pitch, you change the dead load from a horizontal projection into a, I mean, excuse me, you change it from a diagonal projection into a horizontal projection. So I'm going to write that down. Change. the load from diagonal projection to a horizontal projection and you're going to need a pitch over here to do that uh, I'll show you guys how to do that so that'll be our next step so you want to get the, uh, the hypotenuse of this uh, X and Y component so my X component here is 12 my Y component here is 4, this is the pitch, and then I want to get the hypotenuse, H. So H, the hypotenuse is, in this case, it's going to be the X component squared plus the Y component squared. And you take the square root, that will give us our H component. And now once we have our hypotenuse, you take your hypotenuse, you divide it by the X component, and you multiply this ratio uh, by the dead load. In this case, it's 12. Once you do that, you just amplify the dead load so it's a horizontal projection instead of a, uh, a diagonal projection. Once you have that, you could add the dead and snow load together. In this case, I'm using, uh, I'll be using um, ASD uh, dead plus snow combo. So uh, I guess that'll be the fourth step. Is uh, ASD dead plus no combo. You just add them up. So you could add the dead load, the amplified dead load, and the amp and, and the snow load together. Um, our fifth our fifth step will be we want to find the area of influence for the hip beam here. So what is the area of influence? Well we have this is the area. Okay. And half of the loading is going um, to the bearing walls. So half of the loading is going over here, the half, half of the loading is going over here, and then the rest of the loading is going, is going to go to the hip beam. So the area of influence, in this case, we have the area, the square area, and you're going to divide that area by 2 because half of the loading is going to go to the walls. So you want to find the area. Of influence once you find the area of influence then you have your loading right you have your dead plus no you have your area of influence and then you can multiply those two together in the end we want to get the weight that's on the hip beam so the, the weight of that's on the hip beam equals to the area of influence times the loading, the dead plus snow. Now, why we want to find the weight? There's a reason why, and, I'll, sh and I'll, I'll show you why right now. Okay, this is why. It's because if we draw our hip beam, right, this is my hip beam over here. We, ha we have our hip beam, we have jack rafters. And the jack rafters are are like something like this. I, I'm drawing it like, you know, the right way, right here. So as you can see, the jack rafters over here is longer in length, and as you move towards the left, it gets smaller, smaller, smaller. Okay, so it's very similar to this because the loading over here is small, and as you go towards the right, it gets larger. So it's a triangular loading. So we're gonna use all these equations to find our maximum moment, our maximum shear, and our maximum deflection of the hip beam. So this is a simple beam, load increasing uniformly to one end. We'll be using that. And then in the equations we have W, which is our weight. So to get a maximum shear it will be two times the weight divided by three. Our maximum moment will be 0 0.1283 times the weight times the length. Now I didn't talk about the length. The length 
will be the length of the hip beam. So be if this is 10 and this is 10 over here, will be 10 times square root of 2. Or the length itself will be 14.14. So we have 0 0.1283 times the weight of that's on the hip beam times the length, which is 14.14. We're going to have a maximum moment. And once we have our maximum moment, then we could find a section modulus, a required section modulus. Once we have our maximum shear, we could find a required area. And we could also find the maximum displacement with, uh, um, once we have an idea of what's, what we're going to have for a hip beam, then we could, we could have an eye and inertia and a yarn modulus depending on what kind of material we want to use. Uh, this is not the equation. Actually, yeah, this is the equation right here. And then we have the weight. So that with this is going to give us a maximum displacement for the hip beam. And we could see it while all over whatever it is. Is it all over 240 and so on. And then once we do that, then we're done with the, the analyzing and designing part of, of the hip beam. So this is just a part one of a video because it's, it's, if I keep going, I'm going to run out of time. So I'm just going to do a quick recap. We have our, our, hip, our hip roof over here. We designed it for the hip beam. And again, we want to know the pitch. Uh, with the pitch, we're going to change the, the dead load from a diagonal um, projection to a horizontal projection. I showed you guys how to do that. Then we're going to add the, once we have the dead load in a horizontal projection, we're going to add the dead load with the snow load. And then, knowing the area of influence, we'll multiply the loading with the area of influence to get the weight. So then we could plug that weight into these equations to get that maximum moment, maximum shear. Um, so yeah, so for our next video, I'll show you guys how to do that. I'll, I'll use uh, math and whatnot. Um, I, I guess I didn't have enough time to do it on here. Um, but yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think. And uh, see you guys soon. Bye-bye.